Thank you. All right, let's go to the second slide. Uh, and what you can see there is the front of the Karl Marx Hof. Um, there's another slide later on that shows you the plan, but this is a massive uh, social housing complex. Um, it's one of many in Vienna, and I guess I'll, I'll tell you guys a bit of a story about how this amazing uh, social housing came about. So um, before Vienna was formed as a democracy, it, it was a... Um, empire. It was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and so there was a lot of factories in Vienna, and a, a lot of resources sort of being extracted from around the empire, and then brought to Vienna. And so there was a lot of factories and a lot of workers, and there was a massive housing crisis. And the housing crisis was so bad. So there was about um, more than two million people living in Vienna. And the housing crisis was so bad, they had, they had bet gear, which were people who would, um, uh, people would rent out their beds to bet gear. So these were people who would have a bed during the day mm. while that bed wasn't needed. Mm. And then they were turfed out at night so that the, the sort of main tenant would be able to sleep in their bed. <laughs> so, and this was, hundreds of thousands of people who were bed gear, who that, that's how they lived. So um, the housing crisis was one of the things that drove the, uh, the social democratic movement in Vienna and, uh, and a lot of the other movements as well, uh, the, the more sort of communist movements. There, there was a lot of different movements that, that were happening at that time and the, the sort of fundamental aspect of it was the material living conditions, was to improve the material living conditions of workers and unemployed people, of course, as well. So while there was also a big push to change a lot of other aspects of people's lives, the material conditions came first. And this is a sign for um, bread, for a place where you could get bread. And it was organised, it was a co-op that was part of, I think this one was part of the Karl Marx Hof. But you can see on the side there's a bullet, I think that's a bullet hole, I don't know if <laughs> it's or not, but there are bullet <laughs> holes in the Karl Marx Hof for reasons that we'll get to later. So next slide, please. Yeah, so people were very proud of the public housing and um, there's, there's a number of museums that are dedicated to this movement. Um, that particular slide is from uh, the museum that's in the Karl Marx Hof. It's in the washing house, so the Wasch Salon of the Karl Marx Hof. <laughs> And there's also another amazing museum at the um, printing press where they had the uh, the workers' printing press <laughs> and uh, a lot of the social democratic uh, newspapers were printed there and that's got another whole museum there as well, um, including things like there are copies of letters from Friedrich Engels and uh, because they were in contact, the... the Austro-Marxists were in contact with Marx and Engels and, and you know, the, the movement across Europe, basically. So it was a very connected movement, obviously. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and this basically says when we're not here anymore, these stones, so these buildings will speak for us. Mm. And I think that really is the case still to this day. Mm. Next slide, please. So the, the next slide shows a plan of the Karl Marx Hof, and it shows that it basically stretches across a you know, whole suburb. Um, there are multiple streets that cross um, the Hof, and this is, this is only one of them. It's not even the biggest one. So... Um, there are many other wharfs that, uh, you know, have 
other names. There's also a Engelshof in another place as well. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot <laughs> of social housing, and it was a lot of it was built between uh 1919 and 1934. Mm. um next slide please post bubble one so this is in the karl marx hof and what it shows is well the reason i put it in is that it shows how staunch the workers were and how organized it was an organized movement and you know i don't um advocate violence but they it shows that um there was actually an armed uh resistance to the fascists and that's that's what um that's what this uh is about so hmm. yeah they were, they were organized the next slide shows um some of the clubs that they formed that was sort of part of this organizing uh activity mm. and these are pins that people had who were part of uh and a lot of them were about singing i think a lot of these pins are from uh singing clubs where basically people who were in the same um profession or the same uh trade uh or working for the same organization they would uh form clubs and uh, you know, do things together. Whether whether it was um, going bushwalking or you know whatever. That the, the, I think these particular ones were for singing clubs. Um, and this was an important way of organising for um, you know for, for for political action as well. Mm. Um, and then next slide. I should have actually put it together with the other one, oh, but it wow. shows the symbolism of the the three arrows. Um, I believe that symbol has become, you know, it's still a popular symbol, but it started in um, Vienna um, as part of that movement. Hmm. Um, next slide, please. Maybe I'll just go a bit faster now because um, I don't want to run out of time. But if you want to know anything about these slides, I can always um, you can always ask questions about it, and we can go back. This is um, showing the uh, women's movement had its own newspaper, the a newspaper for women workers, and um, yeah, I thought that that was um, interesting as well. Mm. Next slide, please. Written by men? <laughs> no, yeah. it was written by women. There's some very prominent um, feminist part of the movement. Um, yeah, the, the other thing is so that it started as a material movement, but it was also about a lot more than that as well. So things like um, uh, public libraries, public swimming pools, uh, you know, a whole lot of other public services were built um, to to basically well what they wanted to do was um, they wanted to create a new kind of person a, a, a new kind of person who would have you know all these amazing opportunities of um, education and lifestyle and you know basically improving the lifestyles of, of um, workers um, next slide please so this slide is of it, it's a um, if you you can actually follow that QR code and it takes you to a online uh, exhibition about what happened when the workers were fighting off the fascists in 1934, mm. um, and it shows you maps of all the different places that people uh, where the resistance was happening. And even though it's in German, you can actually click on translate on your phone and then you can read it in English. So I thought just in case everyone would like to have a look at that, um, you can follow that QR code. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. 
So now um, I'll move more towards what's happening in the present. So I went to Vienna in 2018, so it's already quite a while ago, but I interviewed a number of people from different parts of the, I guess, the housing sector. And what I'm trying to show in this slide is that there are a lot of different points of view and they're kind of related to where you are in the kind of the political field there. Hmm. Um, and so while there's a lot of support for housing, there's obviously also this neoliberal movement against housing, which people are constantly still organising to fight against as well. So it's a very, very, very dynamic field. Hmm. Um, and uh, one of the property developers I interviewed said that he was looking forward to the tenant laws being changed. And unfortunately, um, this is something that was very possible because they had just um, elected a right-wing government at the federal level. So in, in um, Austria, it's been quite sort of right-wing over across Austria, but then Vienna's been this um, island of of the left. Um, hmm. So there's always sort of been that dynamic as well. Hmm. Um, but then when you go into the institutions in Vienna, um, there's, there's still a lot of very strong pro-worker discourse happening as well. So I interviewed a head of department in the statutory body mm. and he said our system is for the many, not the few. So, the, and this is something <laughs> that, you know, I was thinking if I went into any mm. sort of statutory body in, in Sydney, would I find someone saying that? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. And I, you know, because I did interview a lot of people in Sydney and, they, uh, you know, this is more something that an advocate or an activist would say in Sydney, but over there, it's it's much more widespread across uh, the institutional landscape. Mm. And even I interviewed a government official, and he said that the philosophy of the free market says that subsidised housing is only for the poorest of the poor, but this is not our philosophy. So the philosophy of the Viennese government is that Social housing should be for most people, um, not the super rich, because you know they they can look after themselves. But for everyone else, the, the housing should be for, for basically everyone, and um, and and provided at the highest quality that it's possible to provide it at. So that means everyone has access to high quality housing. And now the result of that. This course, next slide please, is that Vienna actually has a much more stable housing system. This is some uh, research that was done in, uh, published in 2017, uh, comparing the Viennese housing system with, um, actually that is comparing Austria altogether with Ireland. So even though, um, the rest of Austria is taken into account here as well. It shows that it's a very stable housing system compared to, you can see what happened in Ireland during the global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. There was a massive crash in, in, in house prices. Um, next slide, please. And this slide shows a comparison between Sydney and Vienna. Uh, we've got a rate of social housing, or in 2020 we had 4.7% mm. of households in um, social housing in Vienna. It was 50%. Mm. But actually, when I when I started my study in 2017, it was 60%. So you can see that it's actually mm. declining, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but it's still a very high percentage. And in Sydney, people will spend a lot more of their income on rent. Mm. In Vienna, they spend less percentage of their income um, more people are assisted in terms of homelessness services in Vienna and m there's a much lower percentage of households in housing stress mm. in Vienna. So, wow, look at that. 
So it shows how the the movement and the work that people are doing on an ongoing basis is maintaining some of that, uh, you know, social housing provision mm. that's been going on for a long time. But it, you know, it, it's it's just a continuous struggle to maintain it. But it's still much better than what it is in Sydney. Mm. And that's it. Thank mm. you. Thanks. Thanks.